Hello and welcome to this Blender tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to make in the game engine a character move using the up arrow keys or uh, WASD. Uh, make a character move um, strictly in scripting. Uh, we are not going to use the easy game logic bricks. Uh, rather, we're going to use Python scripting. So this should be interesting. What we're going to first do is press G to grab our grab up our cube. Hold control, make it on the ground plane, and then shift A, add mesh plane. So we're just going to set up our basic scene for our game engine. Next, we are going to make sure our system console is enabled. Mine already is, so I'm not going to click that. So if you're on Windows, you can do window toggle system console. If you're on a Mac, I believe you go to your Blender file, and then you make sure you click uh, you run Blender through the one that looks like a terminal window. <laughs> if that makes sense. That's what I uh, seem to have discovered. So let's go into our scripting window, or rather our uh, game logic window, because that's what we're going to be using. And I've never done a tutorial on Blender game engine scripting, but it is fairly similar to, um, to regular Python scripting. Um, except that it gets a lot of inputs. That's mostly the only difference. So we're going to make a new text file, and we're going to call this move, uh, no, player-move.py. And let's save it as that, just so that we don't regret it later. OK, so if we uh, go to templates and Python and go to game logic simple, the developers have been very nice to give us a outline to go with so that we don't have to do this every time. So we're just going to select that all, control C to copy it, go to our player script and control V to paste it. And let's look at, let's look at what this is. So the first thing we have to do is import the Blender game engine Python scripting. So basically in uh, Blender, you'd import BPY in Python, in Python game engine or in Blender game engine you would have to import BGE. Next, we have a method called main. We're defining it here, and we're always going to run the main. Next, we have a few things that uh, don't really make sense. Um, I usually delete these because I don't know what they do, but I know that own is the player. So we're going to call this player because we do need that later. So pont is the, or player now, is, the, uh, pers is this cube. So why don't we go, go ahead and rename this cube, or na rename this cube player, lowercase p. And so I press N to bring up that panel. So first things first, we're going to make it so that this player will always run this script. So in our game logic window, we're going to add an always sensor and make, it, make the and Python. So connect these and make the script player move. And also something you have to do is enable this little trigger right here, which makes it so that it will run this script at least once every tick of logic in the Blender game engine. So basically what this is, is that this script is always going to run as long as the uh, game engine is running. Well, that's cool. So what do we have to do then? What we're going to have to do is first... We're going to have to find if a key is being pressed. And if that key is pressed, we're going to have to find out what key it is. And then we're going to have to apply the movement, movement to the character based on what that key is. So we're going to use WASD. So why don't we just go ahead and uh, write that in this, add a comment with the pound symbol, and do WASD controls. OK. So. Next, we're going to have to declare what our keyboard is. So if we were to go to the uh, API for Python, or for Blender Python, you'd go uh, Google search BPY API. And you'll get this first link. Scroll down. We have game engine modules. So you'll see we have types, logic, and events. Those are what we mostly use. So let's open logic. And you'll see, if you scroll down, that we have bge.logic.mouse, bge.logic.keyboard, which is what we're going to be using. So Control-C to copy that. And 
we're going to make a variable called keyboard. So keyboard equals control V PGE dot logic dot keyboard. So we're going to have to get an event from this keyboard. So if you go back to the logic panel, you'll see if you uh, go to the SCA uh, Python keyboard object, you'll see that we have events. And OK, so MPX, uh, so if you uh, actually scroll down, you'll see, here we go. So uh, you'll see that we have vge.logic.kx underscore sensor, and then we have a couple other things. So inactive will basically mean if it's not pressed, just activated is um, like it's the key that was just pressed. Active is the current key, and just that just deactivated is um, what was just not what, what was just released. So we want active because we want to be able to hold this and have it move. So as long as we're holding this key, it's going to be able to move. What this will also allow us to do is be able to hold W and then press A at the same time, and we're going to be able to go forward and turn left. So that's pretty cool. So why don't we just copy this? Sensor active. So we're going to make an if statement. If that, so if bge.logic.kx underscore sensor underscore active equals equals, so if that is equivalent to keyboard dot events, so if that's equivalent to the event of a keyboard, if we go back to uh, this, we'll see that um, we have keyboard dot events. I think it's here key code. Here we go. So if you go, I went to the, um, I was, how did I get to that? I was up here, and I saw bg.logic.keyboard. I went to clicked on that, and we have keyboard.events. Click the key code, and it will basically give you what each of these keys is. So pressing a W key to go forward, if we find that, is the equivalent to doing bg.events.w key. So pretty simple. All you really have to do is search through the API and find what you want to do. So. Yeah, so holding down the W key will trigger this if statement. So we want to do colon and enter. So what do we want to do if W is pressed? Well, if we go back to the API, you'll notice that uh, there's a lot of switching to the API uh, in Blender coding. So we want to do, um, we want to have our character move. So I th that would be in logic, OK? So if you scroll down, you'll see that we have game actuator. No, object actuator. So scroll down, scroll down. Oh, no, scroll up. <laughs> oh, no, it's not here. It is, uh, where are you? Well, we know that we want it to uh, move, right? So why don't we just do a quick search of it? Movement. Ah, here we go. bg.types kx object apply movement okay so our object is uh, currently a player <laughs> that sounds weird player will be able to use this method so why don't we copy that and basically what apply movement do does is simply moves it a set amount you got to be careful with this because you could be doing something that will apply a force and that will use a force to push it there uh, but you're not actually you're just being pushed. You're not moving in a sense, if that makes any sense. So we're going to do player dot apply movement. And you'll see if we go back, it has the movement uh, vector and then local value to be, to be either true or false. So basically, that will mean that we could, if it was false, if we wanted to always move on the global y-axis, that would make sense. But say our object is rotated and we want to move it on we want to move it forward, so this way. We don't want to move on the global y axis. We want to move it on G, Y, Y, on the uh, local y axis. So that will do that. So uh, yeah, so what we're gonna do is add in a uh, little code here. So zero um, point one and zero will move it forward on the y-axis and then do a comma and then true to move it forward on its local y-axis 
So it's pretty much the same for everything else. If you just copy this whole set of code. Well, actually, before we do that, why don't we just press play to see what this does. P. And voila, it moves forward when I press the W key. Pretty cool. So why don't we just paste this. Watch your tabbing when you do this too. Control C. Enter. Shift tab. By the way, uh, it goes back a tab. Enter. Shift tab. Control E. So we want this one to be S capital S uh, and we're gonna make this negative movement on the y-axis uh, we're gonna make this one a and this one D so these ones are a little different you can't do apply movement it is instead a method that is called apply rotation so it's very similar you'll see it right underneath it apply rotation is the same exact thing as apply movement except it's rotation because we don't want it to move I mean, we could have it move up and down, left and right, but we want it to move and then rotate to go left and right. You could, of course, uh, make it so that it's apply movement and make this on the x and uh, the x axis, and that would make that would be just as fine. But we want to do apply rotation. Uh, apply rotation. Okay, and we don't want it on the y axis. That would look really weird. We want it to be on the z-axis. You know, I'm not quite sure uh, what sensitivity for this will be, so we're just going to start it low at 0.05, and this 0.05. And it's the same thing for apply rotation. We want it to be on the local z-axis and not the global. So we're going to leave that at true. So, uh, oh, actually, that should be negative 0.05. Okay, so if we were to press play now, we move forward, we move backwards, we move right, and we move left. So... I can also move and I can do those things at the same time. So that is a little bit of code for you guys. Um, hopefully it wasn't too confusing. Why don't we go ahead and save this so we can access it later. Um, that is a basic way um, on how to set up code and we only needed two logic bricks to do this. Obviously you could do add sensor keyboard and make it W and you could do the same exact thing using the motion thing, um, the motion actuator, but you know, personally, I like it better when I have complete control over things <laughs> in my life. And uh, this makes it um, a lot easier to tweak. And the cool thing about this that you can't say with logic bricks is that you can apply this code to anything. So say you had logic bricks and you had the character movement. Say I wanted to copy this all or I don't need I don't even need to copy it. Oops, don't do that. <laughs> um, I want to duplicate this cube and I want to have a second player in my game. Now this player obviously already has um, this sensor set, but you know, if I added a new object, let's actually just do that now, grab it, and we wanted it to uh, always run Python and make it true, but we just did, press play. We now have both of them moving at the same time, which is really weird, but um, you know, if I wanted to, I can make two players in my game, one controlled with WASD and one controlled with up arrow and down arrow, and it'd be super easy. easy. And obviously the two player doesn't really work in this uh, file, so we're gonna delete, delete that. Um, <clears throat> but the cool thing is, as I was getting at before, is that this can be shared easily between files. So say you wanna do some experimentation and you don't wanna spend 20 minutes setting up the logic bricks to with W and it's it's so it's so time consuming with logic bricks and it gets really confusing. With this, it's easy to see, it makes sense, and if you just rem remember some of the more technical things like this, um, you're fine. And uh, basically, this little bit of knowledge can be uh, applied to mouse clicks, um, to uh, a whole a whole ton of things. So just remember, if in doubt, just look at the API and uh, try to use a uh, logic. So thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something and I'm going to have this code in the description um, for you guys to, you know, look at, but please, you know, obviously try to write it yourself. So, okay. Thank you for watching this tutorial and have a good day.